Welcome aboard Just Jets with your captain, Matt O'Leary. Buckle up and enjoy the ride. Hey, what's going on? I'm Matt O'Leary back with episode number 56 of Just Jets. How's it going? We have a ton to get into today. We have Sam Darnold's perfect fit. We have Chris Sims' quarterback rankings and your voicemails. But before all that, we have a contest to get into. If you watched last week, let's roll the tape. Who won? All right. This is for all the marbles. Who gets the Manscaped Care Package? Liam Reardon. Congratulations, Liam. Congratulations, Liam. Your package will be on the way very soon. Don't you fret. And now let's talk about the sponsor. So, Manscaped. Head on over to manscaped.com and use my promo code JETS20 for 20% off and free shipping. You can pick yourself up the lawnmower 3.0. I mean, it's that time. March is coming around. You have St. Patty's Day coming up. If you're trying to get lucky, you know what you have to do. You got to keep everything Manscaped down there and keep it cool. So head on over to Manscaped. Promo code JETS20. Maybe you want to pick up uh, one of my favorites, actually, the refined cologne. We smelling nice and uh, really smelling good over there. So check it out. Promo code JETS20, 20% off and free shipping. Let's get into the episode. Sam Darnold. Perfect fit. I found his perfect fit. So this past week, the Washington football team released Alex Smith. So supposedly there was a little bit of drama there. Alex Smith uh, wanted to come back and play last year, which he did. He was the comeback player of the year, well-deserved. But Washington didn't want him back. Or in, in I don't know if that's the right way to word it. They were looking to go another direction at the quarterback. They weren't looking to bring back Alex Smith, who's been hurt. Hasn't played a whole lot and is up there in age. So they decide to move on. Things kind of go poorly when it comes out that Smith, uh, you know, shares with the media in an article where he's talking about the experience of coming back and how uh, the new regime wasn't super supportive of that. And I get it. It's a tough situation. So they decide to move on. And now quarterback is definitely a need for this team. Are you going to bring back Heineke, who had one good game in his entire career? It was a playoff game against Tampa Bay, but other than that, he has done pretty much nothing. So that's a question mark. Kyle Allen, do you trust him? No. And right now they are picking eight, 19th, excuse me, 19th in the NFL draft. In the second round, they have pick 51. So you could do a couple of things. You could hope and pray Mac Jones is there. I'm not a huge Mac Jones guy to begin with, and I don't think he's going to make it to 19. I think he's probably going to go between 10 and 15, somewhere in that range. Um, So they're kind of SOL with where they are picking at 19. And maybe they'll go a veteran route. And I don't know if they necessarily have the firepower to go and trade for Deshaun Watson or Russell Wilson. But what they could do is take a flyer on a guy like Sam Darnold. And I don't think you're getting pick 19. I know that's potentially what, uh, you know, they have rumored the Jets to be looking for a first round pick. Um, and they think that Sam Darnold could get a first-round pick, like Schefter said that a couple of times, but I think you're looking at a second-round pick this year and maybe a conditional pick in the following year in 2022. If you're telling me I'm getting a second and a fifth, a second and a fourth, whatever it is, even if it's just pick 51, I think that's pretty solid value, and for the Jets, that would mean if you decide to move on from Sam Darnold, you would have pick two, 23, 34, and 51. So essentially... You're one pick off from having four top 50 picks. That's impressive. That's a lot of firepower to either A, trade for Deshaun Watson, B, draft your new franchise quarterback, start the rookie deal over, get him weapons, because that's supposedly the thing. You can't start over with a rookie quarterback because they're going to have the same issues with Sam Darnold that Sam Darnold had, even though the Jets have a boatload of cap space and a boatload of picks. Don't get that argument, never will. And if, as for Sam Darnold going to Washington, they have, they're have a team with a really good defense in a division where they could absolutely compete. They won the division last year with a losing record, but who knows what's going to happen with Dallas. The Giants aren't ready to compete. Sorry, Giants fans, if you're watching this, it's just 
not ready yet. The Eagles are going to be a dumpster fire. Dallas seems like they could potentially be the front runner if they get Dak back healthy and they have a bunch of big name guys, but they always seem to underachieve. But they have a pretty good situation for Sam. A really good defense. The sixth ranked offensive line in 2020 by Pro Football Focus. Obviously a big name free agent there is Brandon Sheriff. We got to see what they do there. And a couple of nice weapons in Antonio Gibson and Terry McLaurin. So that is definitely a situation where he could potentially succeed. A good coach. A better situation. And for the Jets, you're getting the value back that you're probably looking for. To me, the biggest uh, teams that are going to be seeming like in the mix for Sam Darnold. Obviously, the Colts were a team that we thought, but they got Carson Wentz. So, to me, it's really the Bears or Washington. And Washington, the stars just seem to be aligning. And this past week with Washington releasing Alex Smith, they're definitely in the market for a quarterback. Do I think they could attack it in the draft? Maybe, but I think they're going to go the veteran route. And to me, Sam Darnold is the next veteran guy on the move. I don't necessarily think... Deshaun Watson or Russell Wilson is going to go to Washington, but I could absolutely see Sam there. And his one game that he played in Washington, he looked pretty good, Sam Darnold, in 2019. So maybe they'll want to take a flyer on him. So that's my perfect destination for Sam Darnold. Uh, The next thing that I would like to get into in the monologue opening statement here is Chris Sims' quarterback ranking. I understand that Chris Sims, if you look back on his rankings from 2018, they look pretty good. He had Lamar Jackson at one, Josh Allen at two, then I believe Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold, Josh Rosen. Now, it, it, most people did not have that as the 2018 rankings. Now, this year, his rankings are a little bit different. And everyone thinks the generational talent, Trevor Lawrence is the number one quarterback. So he puts Zach Wilson in front and Lawrence number two. Now, I am a big Zach Wilson guy. You have seen it on the site. I get all that. But in being completely honest and not trying to get clickbait and not trying to be the hot take artist to get views. I can't say that in good faith. This was Wilson's top six. He had Wilson, Lawrence, Jones, Mond, Fields, Lance. So Fields five, Lance six, Lawrence two, Wilson one. I I can't say that I agree with that. And I know he has been right in the pass with stuff like this, but I just don't see how you could possibly do that based on what we've seen. My rankings goes as follows. Not that if anyone really cares, but I'll say it anyway. Lawrence, it to me, is the clear-cut number one. Wilson is two. Fields is a very close three. It's essentially a 2A, 2B situation, but Fields is very close right there at three. Four, Lance. Five, Jones. And then Kyle Trask, six. Like, I don't think I could put Mond in the top. He has him fourth. I don't know if I could put Mond that high. I don't think he's going to go before Fields and Lance. Like, that I, That doesn't make sense to me. I You could be high on Mond in like a, I don't know, when do you think he's going to go? Third round, maybe? Something like that? And I'm, I don't even really love Kyle Trask, but I just think the valuation is very bizarre here. I don't know how he came up with this rankings, and I know that he had a whole explanation and stuff for it, but I truly think that, In this business, a lot of times people fall in love with trying to be different just for the sake of being different. Sometimes you're right because of that. You go against the grain. Um, But other times you just have to trust your gut and trust what you see. And based on what I've seen, and whether it be from games, from film, from breakdowns, I don't know how you can't have Trevor Lawrence won. And that's coming from someone who really likes Zach Wilson a lot. I do. And to have fields that low is just... That's not right. To have Lance that low is just crazy. There's no way. You're telling me you'd rather draft Mon than Fields or Lance? Not me. And hopefully not Joe Douglas. Hopefully Joe Douglas's draft order or quarterback rankings doesn't look this way. And I guess I hope that (laughs) Jacksonville thinks their quarterback situation, looks at their quarterback uh, evaluations like this. And I hope Zach Wilson goes one overall because if Trevor Lawrence is sitting there at two, oh my God. Like everyone was saying, oh, Justin Fields, maybe there's a chance that he goes to Jacksonville because of the Ohio State connection. I personally thought that was BS the entire time. I think, again, Lawrence is the clear-cut generational player. But if they somehow get suckered into Zach Wilson at one, I'm not saying it's likely. I'm not saying that it's going to happen. Again, I'm going to say it's 99.99999% chance of Trevor Lawrence going one. 
But if for whatever reason something crazy happens, then, well, Joe Douglas just absolutely hit a home run because the best player in the draft would be sitting there for him at two. So that'd be a huge hit. So I'm hoping that Urban Meyer thinks the same way as Chris Sims. I don't think he will, but that's my hope. I don't know. I just I didn't care for that rankings. I thought it was a little clickbaity, so I wanted to get in on that, get my take on it. Uh, so with that, that's it for the opening monologue. Let's hear from you and the voicemails. All right, to the voicemails we go. First one comes from Nikki in New Jersey, and he has an alternate option at wide receiver. Let's hear what he is interested in. Hi, uh, Matt. Um, this is Nikki calling from New Jersey, and I just wanted to talk about um, – I feel like this is an underrated question. Like, all these people are, like, trying to go after Allen Robinson, Kenny Galladay. I feel like, in my opinion, why don't we just go, like, a cheaper route and go for Antonio Brown? He's a very underrated wide receiver, and it, it, it will look like he would be a good uh, wide receiver with uh, Jameson Crowder. I mean, it looks like a great duo. It's pretty much all I have. Thank you, and go Jets. I wouldn't touch Antonio Brown with a 10-foot pole. I'm really all good there. He's He can stay in Tampa Bay if he wants. He can go to another contending team. Understand he's going to be cheaper. You're right about that. Allen Robinson and Kenny Galladay is going to be getting seventeen plus million dollars a year. But I don't want to take on the headache that is Antonio Brown. I don't. I don't think he's. I don't think it's worth it. He's going to be thirty three years old. He's played what nine games in the last two years. I'm okay. I'm all right with that, Nikki. I don't think I'm going to take a chance on that. Uh, he's a ticking time bomb. I really want no part of him. Uh, thank you for checking in. Let's go to Raphael, who has a question on the Jaguars. Hey, Matt, my name is Raphael. Just wanted to say, um, when do you think in history the Jacksonville Jaguars will actually make it to the Super Bowl and win it and have their first Kingdom Come trophy, their first Super Bowl win? When and where will that, or what year do you think that will happen? And talk a little bit more about what do you think the Jacksonville Jaguars should do? Because now, even though the Jets have won Super Bowl, but we're starting to look a lot like the Jacksonville Jaguars. But I hope this season 2021, we come out on top and we rebuild the right way and we go for the glory because this is going to be the year. I'm feeling it. I have good tinglings all over my body about the Jets. Oh. I have the draft pick I want for a quarterback, which it will be Zach Wilson. I mock my words. It will be Zach Wilson in the, in the draft we're going to get if we go for a quarterback. And another thing that we will need is one good pass rusher and one good cornerback that says, I'm here to stay, and here I come. There you have it. Raphael has a tingling in his legs about the Jets this year, I think. Jesus, man, this is just bizarre. Liam and Sable's up next. He wants to talk about running back and cornerback. Hey, Matt, it's your boy Liam from Sayville, and I have one question. So everybody is saying that the Jets need to target running back and cornerback in the draft this year, and I don't really understand why. Because we're already so young at those positions, you know, LaMichael hmm. P. Ryan, Ty Johnson at running back, and then at corner, you know, we have Bryce Hall, Lamar, uh, Lamar Jackson, Bless Austin, a couple other guys. Like, why are we going to draft those, draft at those positions again after we drafted at them last year? Give these guys a chance to develop. Maybe, if anything, bring in like a veteran, bring in Richard Sherman. You know, to teach these guys. I don't understand why we're going to keep drafting young. Give these guys a chance to grow, develop. You know, it's hard to tell, especially after a bad season. So, anyway, you know, let me know what you think. And uh, go Jack. Thank you. I get where you're coming from on that one. And I guess I'll try to answer it the best that I can, Liam. Um, on running back, you're right. They do have two younger guys. So, I personally, this is how I would attack both positions. Running back, I'd be looking to add a veteran free agent on the cheap. I don't want to pay Aaron Jones $15 million. I don't want to pay Kenyon Drake $8 million. I don't want to pay Chris Carson, who has a million miles on him. I don't want to pay uh, James Conner. 
Jamal Williams, Marlon Mack, someone like that. If you're telling me I could flip one of our fifth round picks for Tony Pollard or something like that, I'll, I'll go that direction and get a veteran in here with one of those two guys, with those two guys surround out the running back room. In this system, the Jets can get good value on quote unquote lesser guys, someone who you don't have to pay a ton of money or someone you don't have to, you know, spend the first or second round draft pick on. Um, I'm with you on not drafting a running back this year, but I am someone who believes you can get good value at the running back position around, you know, three, four, five, et cetera. But um, the reason why corner, I think, is a big issue is there's a lot of question marks or a lot of unknown. So right as it stands right now, who is the Jets' number one corner? Bryce Hall, I guess, right? I like Bryce Hall. I think he can be a starter, but to go on and bank on him being your number one, you can't do that. You can bank on him being a starter, but I agree with you. You have to bring in someone, whether it be like a Richard Sherman or a Ronald Darby or someone like that. Sure. We don't know what's happening with Brian Poole. Is he going to come back to be a slot corner? If not, that's another area you're going to need. Behind that, Bless Austin really didn't do much for me this past year. Javelin Gidry might be something, but I don't I don't think Lamar Jackson's gonna be any good. Um spending an early pick, something that they haven't done on corner. When was the last time they spent a first or a second round pick on corner? Twenty thirteen, right? With D Milner. Unless I am missing one, which I don't think I am. So you have Mackay Becton in twenty twenty. 19, Quinnen, 18, Darnold, 17, Adams, 16, Lee, 15, Leo, 14 was Calvin Pryor, 13, D. Miller. Yeah, 2013 was the last time they took a corner that early. Uh, so it's a little different. I like Bryce Hall. I think he could be a starter. But if you're telling me that you are potentially looking for two new starting corners at slot and an outside corner, then you're probably still going to have to draft one. Corners are really big need. Uh, I don't know if it's up there. I might put edge in front of corner, but I would much more be willing to spend an early draft asset on corner than I would a running back, if that answers your question. I don't think the Jets could get good value on a running back early. They're, they're not in that position. If you're pretty much a complete team and the l- last piece you need is a running back, then sure, take Najee Harris or Travis Etienne. I get it. I can understand that. Or if you're a team who has cap space and a contender and you want to sign an Aaron Jones, then okay, you can do that. The Jets don't have that luxury. They don't. Um, so I'm with you. I think they can get some pretty good value on the cheap there. And a corner, corner is an important position, especially in this defense that's going to be run under Robert Sala. Uh, so they might have to spend uh, a draft asset on corner, but I definitely am with you on running back. Next up is Max in New Jersey has a mock draft for us. Hi, this is Max from Homeville, New Jersey, and I have a mock draft scenario. So in this mock draft, I'm training Sam Darnold to the Carolina Panthers. The, the Panthers received Sam Darnold in the 23rd overall pick. We received the 8th overall pick from Carolina, which is like a little pick swap because they're swapping our 23rd pick for Carolina's 8th. With the second pick in the draft, I really want the Jets to draft Zach Wilson, the quarterback out of BYU. I just feel like Zach Wilson is a perfect quarterback to take number two. He reminds me, his play style in college reminds me of Patrick Mahomes. And I think if you develop, if you've got a veteran quarterback and you mentor Zach Wilson for a year, then in 2022, you start Zach Wilson. The Jets mm-hmm. can become a playoff team. With the eighth pick, you might not like this pick, but I want the Jets to dress down to fifth. And I, I get it. He might like go like third overall to Miami, but there is a possibility he might fall. His size is like 6'1", but I really like Devonta Smith. He's a hard worker, good player, and I really feel like he's going to translate well into the NFL. I think if we have the eighth overall pick and we pass on Devonta, if he's still on the board, I think the Jets are making a huge mistake if he's still on the board. I get it. There are other needs that the Jets have, like interior offensive line, corner, edge. But Devonta is just a generational talent, and you can't pass up on him. What's your thoughts on my mock draft and any changes that I need to make in my mock draft? Uh, a couple thoughts. Um, okay. 
So Darnold in 23 for eight. Value's close on that. I think it's closer than people think might think. Uh, so you have two and eight. I like Zach taking Zach Wilson at two. I like that a lot. Sitting him for a year, I don't like. Because in today's window, unless you have a quarterback in place, like Alex Smith in Kansas City in 2017, you are better off playing your quarterback right away because you have four very cheap years. So if you're just punting on year one, then you are limiting your window after that. You don't want to do that because then essentially his second year is like his rookie year because that's the first time he's getting playing experience. So then you're really limiting it to two years instead of the potential four years. Um, so that I don't like. I want to, I would, if I'm drafting Zach Wilson or if I'm drafting a quarterback at two, I'm playing him right away. Devontae Smith, if he's there, sure. I like him. I think he's a good player. I agree with you. I think he's going to be a very good wide receiver. I don't see how he possibly makes it past the Eagles at six, right? They pick six. Unless Jamar Chase goes at six and the Lions go another direction, maybe that's how you get there. But um, I would be very surprised if he makes it to eight. If he does, sure. Let's take him. Next up is, I believe, Blake. Um, either Blake or Blaine, sorry, in Idaho. Wants to talk about trading back. Hey, Matt. This is uh, Blade from Idaho Falls, Idaho. Um, I've been watching the podcast for a long time. Love it. Uh, first time calling in. I just had a kind of a scenario. Just wonder what you thought. Um, what if just, uh, Houston was all about um, kind of blackballing to Sean Watson and not letting him out for a year, and then they let him ride the bench for a year and uh, let him hold out. And so, say we get to come draft time, and uh, Deshaun isn't like Houston's still not picking up their phone. Um, what if we just Build a team, uh, trade back, maybe dra- draft a Jamar Chase or a Kyle Pitts, and then take uh, Wyatt Davis with the second first, pick, uh, the second pick in the first round, and uh, build a team, and that would give us a chance to see uh, the next year if Sam Darnold was um, uh, legit or not, if he's going to be our guy, and then the year after that we still have our two first round picks, um, and we would have we would be the team. We would have the free agency this year, the draft this year, and we could build our team and be even that more appealing for Deshaun Watson. And uh, we would still have all the firepower to go get him with the two first round picks. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, thanks. Uh, I'm, I'm just trying to see if I understand this. So, in this scenario, the Texans are betting on Watson holding out. And then if Watson holds out for the year, the Jets stay with Sam. And then next year, trade for Deshaun Watson. Um, I don't think Deshaun Watson was going to hold out for the whole year. Maybe I am wrong in this scenario, but I think I think he gets moved. I don't think the Jets can go into the drift. So if they are sitting there with the pick at two, and if Watson or if Houston's not answering the call, then you have to go your plan B. If your plan B is build around Sam Darnold then just go all in and build around them and don't have this hanging thought of, oh, maybe you can get Watson in 2022. Like, you have to go with a plan overall. And if that's the plan, then okay, do that. If it's take a quarterback at two, take Fields, take Wilson, whoever you want there, then I would prefer to lean one of those two guys on either Wilson or Fields. But if you want to stick with Darnold, then let's go all in. I don't like the half measure of, oh, well, if Darnold stinks again, you could have that safety net. If you think there's a chance that he could stink in 2022, then you should already move on now. Like, why are you just wasting another year if that's what you think is going to happen? I don't know. I I think it's either got to be all in and pray to God it goes right if you're Joe Douglas because that is his biggest decision. He had he brought in the new coach, and now he has one or two options. He could either draft his own guy and have the GM, the head coach and the quarterback on the same timeline or keep the guy that was in place from the last regime and both him and Salah's future can be riding on the guy from the last regime. Which do you think is more likely here? 
I'm going to leave it at that. Next up is Vinny and calling from Peekskill, New York, who wants to talk to Arnold. Hey, Matt. It's Vinny from Peekskill, and I want to talk some uh, Sam Darnold stuff. Now, obviously, we see a lot of Darnold fans who want to talk about keeping him and all this, but to be honest, you can dispel everything in seven words. The risk is not worth the reward. <laughs> And it's simple, and that's simply the case because if Sam Donald flops again in year four, now you have to move on from a court. Now you need to get a quarterback. Everybody knows it, and because you have so much draft capital to spend, they're going to charge a premium for you to trade up. And you don't even know what you're going to be getting next year because we don't know what next year's quarterback class is going to be. You know. Not to mention that by trading up to get a quarterback, you have less picks to work with and less resources to build around that quarterback. So it's the same situation that you were in in 2018, where you had no picks to build around Darnold, and it made it that much more difficult. It's the same situation all over again, and we can't risk that. We cannot risk that situation happening. All right. Vinny, um... That's kind of the point that I've been trying to convey with my take the whole time. And I, a lot of people in the comment section, especially, think I have this whole like like Sam Donald vendetta out against him. That I hate Sam Donald. That's not the case. I don't hate Sam Donald. I was very much rooting for Sam Donald, and I thought he was going to have a big year in year three. The reality of what happened was in year three, he took a step back. And I know there is circumstances around the coaching staff and around the offensive line and the weapons. I understand all that. But the risk, it is almost more risky to bet on Sam Darnold working out than drafting a new guy and starting that clock over. Because you have to decide this year if you're going with that fifth-year option and you're going to tie money into Sam Darnold. And like I just said for the last caller... Is Joe Douglas, who didn't draft him, or is Robert Sala, who is now two coaches after the guy who was here when he was drafted, going to want to stick with him, or are they going to want to get their own guys? And I think when you just try to take the heart out of it and look at it from an actual team-building perspective and a business perspective, I think the decision comes a little bit more obvious. But we're human, right? I understand that. I like Sam. I have a Sam Darnold jersey. I like Sam. When he was drafted, extremely excited. 2018 and in parts of 2019, excited. What I saw this year, scary. Scary bad. Some of the worst quarterback play that I've seen. I watched Geno Smith play. I watched 2016 Ryan Pat- Fitzpatrick play. I watched Brooks Bollinger play in 2005. And that's as bad as I've seen. That is just as bad. Luke Falk, he was really, really bad. And is some of that on Gase? Yes. Is some of it on the supporting cast? Yes. But to completely absolve Darnold of any blame here in year three, I don't think is fair. It's not. So I'm with Vinny here. I think it's too risky. Let's go to Charlie in Wisconsin next who wants to talk about trading back, not from pick two, but from pick 23. Hey, Matt. Charlie from Wisconsin. I was calling about the trade back scenario, not from two, but from 23. So the way I see it, the... At number two, I'm a believer in Justin Fields, so I'm never going to trade back from that spot. But from 23, the way I see it, the second round is really, and like the late first even, is where the like, what do you call it, the like treasure trove of the draft is. you got guys like Rondell Moore, Jason Noah, et cetera. So what do you think about a trade back? The first team that comes to mind being from Wisconsin, the Packers, mm, who, okay. hate to say it, might actually get around to taking a wide receiver this year. So they could trade up, get their Rashad Bateman, Kadarius Tony, and the Jets could move back, get some extra picks. What do you think about that? Ooh, okay. No one's really talked about this, Charlie. I like this. This is different. I could absolutely see Joe Douglas doing that. I mean, he did it in the second round last year. Everyone was pounding on the table because Denzel Mims was somehow there. Where were the Jets picking? 48, and they moved back. Or it might have been earlier, and then he moved back to 48. I can't remember exactly how it happened, but... He ended up moving back, and everyone was upset because they're like, oh, my God, Mims is sitting on the board. Like, what are you doing? And then somehow Denzel Mims was still there. So maybe they can move back. And where is Green Bay sitting? I guess pick either 29 or 30 would be my guess, right? So if that's the case, then you're moving back, what, five, six, seven spots, something like that. 
And from there, you could still take a, a quality guy and then take an, you get an additional pick on top of that. Sure, why not? I like it. That's an interesting thought, Charlie. I, I really like it. Because unless there's someone you really love at 23, then okay, take it. But if you're willing to move back a few spots and you still think you get some good value wherever you're picking then, it's not a bad play. I like it. And that's a good point, too, because it's going to be wide receiver. I mean, the big names, obviously, are going to be there at the top. And then once Waddle's gone, maybe around 15, 17 in that range, there's going to be a little bit of a gap. And then around where the Jets are picking, you have those guys that you rattled off. And it could get competitive. And maybe the uh, a team like the Packers is going to want to move up. I like that. Interesting outside-of-the-box take, Charlie. I like that one a lot. Let's go to Travis in Ohio. He had an epiphany. Let's hear from Travis. Hey, Matt. Yo. Travis from Ohio. <laughs> what hey, up, buddy? Man? I just had a massive epiphany when I went to the bathroom. <laughs> Love and it. I was on the <laughs> throne. Anyway, listen, buddy. You know how the Texans want two defensive stars? How about we give them C.J. Mosley, defensive star, hasn't played in two years, massive contract, we can move it, and Marcus May, who I love, I don't know if he's there long term. He's twenty. He's going to be twenty eight, and we can sign other safeties. We got Ashton Davis. Anyway, so we move those two, and then the number two pick because we don't need a quarterback now, and maybe one or two first rounders for Deshaun. Then I'll get that bobblehead. I'll get that jersey. <laughs> love it. And we'll love life, and we didn't have to give up that much. Tell me that you hope they do it when they get desperate because he doesn't want to play for him. And this will probably be my last call about Deshaun Watson. Anyway, just came to me on the pooper. <laughs> love you, buddy. Bye. Uh, Travis, you're hilarious, man. Um. While I would love that from the Jets' perspective, I think the Texans would be looking to get younger defensive players. Like you said, Will, um, Marcus May is going to be 28, so the Jets would have to franchise tag him and then trade him. Um, and with Mosley, while a good player, he's a little bit on the older side now. And on top of that, he hasn't really played in two years. So um, I'm not saying trade Quinn Williams. I don't think I want to do that. What I would say is if you're telling me it's three firsts, a second, and John Franklin Myers, I could live with that. I think that's maybe a little bit more realistic. I think they want someone who is on the cheap that they don't have to pay yet and is could be a young starter for their team. And for the unfortunate part with both of those guys, and while I understand that especially wanting to move the Mosley deal, that there's a red flag there for may it's yeah he's a good starter he's just getting up there in age and he's only going to be on a one-year franchise tag and for mosley it's he hasn't really played in two years and that contract is a disaster so uh while i like the thought travis i don't think it's going to be very likely unfortunately uh next is i think liam i think it's liam if not i'm sorry from new jersey wants to talk about penny sewell Hi, Matt. I'm Leo from Madison, New Jersey, and this is what the Jets should do. They should um, draft Sewell and keep Sam Darnold so Sewell can go on the right side and Justin can go on the left side so they can block more guys and they can, um, so so Darnold can have some more protection and be more comfortable. Bye. Thanks for receiving my message. Appreciate you checking in. Thank you for the voicemail and the call. Um, here's my thing with that. I personally don't look at right tackle as a huge need. I think George Fant was fine. Where the issue was on the Jets' offensive line, to me, was on the interior, specifically the guard positions. I think they need two new starting guards. Now, there's not a guard that you could really take there at two. At 23, maybe, but I think if the Jets are keeping Sam Darnold and you want to, if you want to play the game of if the Jets are keeping Sam Darnold, then I think it would be in the Jets' best interest to trade out of two, get a haul for whoever's going to want to move up and take a quarterback and move back and get even more picks. So if the Jets aren't 
taking a quarterback and are going to stick with Sam Darnold, which isn't my preferred plan. But if you want to do that, then I think your best idea is to trade out. Um, and with Sewell, you're going to have to move him to the right side. He's a left tackle, so you'd have to play him out of position. He's going to have to get paid around the same time as Mackay Becton. It just those things don't add up to me. So I wouldn't personally do that, but I understand the appeal. And thanks again for uh, checking in with me, Liam. Last one, let's go to Ben in New Jersey, who has some thoughts on the Joe Douglas presser. What's up, Matt? It's Ben from Jersey. So the Joe Douglas Robert Sala presser happened today, and I'm just here to give a few of my takeaways. So first of all, um, what Douglas said was absolutely true. In the beginning, we are loaded with cap space and picks. I'm confident about where we're going from here. Second, we're still in the same position on quarterback with Sam Donald. We either trade him or drop the rookie or trade for Watson. He said we're still non-committal on Darnold, basically, and teams are calling and he's picking up the phone. So I think that's a good thing. I feel like I don't think we're going to keep Sam. I'm and with you. Find it very, I'll be very surprised if we do, to say the least. Next, I'm going to talk, next, um, the last night, Marcus May's agent just went out and bashed the Jets for not giving May a long-term extension. Douglas said that um, talks with May have been very good, and he wants to lock up lock him up long term. I'm confident in May being a Jet in 2021. If not Me locked too. up, then on the franchise tag. Me too. I don't think there's any. I don't think he'll demand a trade or want out or anything like that. Next, um, Douglas talked about um, the free, free agency a little bit. He wants an explosive playmaker in free agency, <coughs> Alan Robinson. <laughs> that um, would work. Which is good to know because uh, there are some playmakers in free agency. Yes. He also, Robert Sala actually stated that he wanted a number uh, cornerback that can lock people up in one-on-one coverage, particularly on third down, <coughs> Richard Sherman. <laughs> Love it. Finally, what we've all been waiting for, Deshaun Watson. So, Obviously, we can't mention Sean Watson um, specifically in this presser because that'll be tampering. Right. But um, when when uh, someone asked, what would what would you do if you had the opportunity to trade multiple first round picks for a player? He said, obviously, he said, obviously, I like he he said um, he stick, he stuck to his philosophy about building through a draft. But he said, if the opportunity arises where a player of a high caliber would become available that he would be aggressive in this approach and this is exactly what we wanted to hear he knows he's obviously going to stick to his philosophy he's not going to mention Deshaun Watson's name because that's illegal right now but it's good to know that he will be aggressive towards Watson if he becomes available and I fully expect him to come out and offer three firsts and a player I think that's a reasonable offer I think I don't think he'll give up both firsts this year I think it'll be our pick I'll be two, maybe our pick, our first next year, our first in 2023, and John Franklin Myers, if it comes down to that, there you that's go. what I think. Let me know your thoughts on the presser, and as always, go Jeff. Ben, I think you hit it on the head, man. Totally fair. Um, I would be surprised. Uh, I'd be surprised. I, I, I'm going to say it. I'd be surprised if the Jets come away with Allen Robinson in free agency. And I love Robinson. I would love him on this Jets team. The reason why I say that is I don't think the Jets would be able to sign both him and Thune, or I don't see it likely that they land both those big guys. And I think the way that Joe Douglas has prioritized the offensive line, that we're more likely to see a bigger name, whether it's him or uh, Lindsley, the center for the Packers to come in here, than to see a big wide receiver come in. And I definitely, I will agree a thousand percent. Usually I am not a fan of signing cornerbacks over 30 years old. Richard Sherman seems to be an outlier here. And if you get him on a one-year deal, or even like a two-year deal that's really more like a one-year deal or something you can get out of if need be after one year, then great. I'm all for that and have him mentor guys like Bryce Hall. Because if you remember, early on in Darrell Revis's career, in 2008, his second year in the league, the Jets brought back Ty Law, and that seemed to be part of the spark. Revis's career trajectory after that skyrocketed. Was he a good corner before that? Yeah, he was. But after they brought in Ty Law... It took him to the next level. And then Rex Ryan comes in, and obviously that the rest is history. Um, but sure, I'd bring in Richard Sherman in a second. I think he would fit in this Jet system on a short-term deal, mentor some of the younger guys, draft, add more to it, 
and continue to build that secondary. But I like that a lot and I agree with it a lot, Ben. So that's going to do for me on this episode number 56. Please don't forget to subscribe wherever it is that you listen to the show. Give a rating and review if you're listening to the podcast form. Really helps me out and I appreciate the love and support from each and every one of you. That's going to do it for me on this episode. I'm Matt O'Leary and I will talk to you next time.